Hello, everyone. Welcome to my show, Going From Thousands to Millions. I have a special guest on today, Nick Russian. Nick, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, mate. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Nick, look, um, for those of us who don't know you, who is Nick Russian? Just tell us a little bit about you and your background, because I know you are going for a very important role that I can feel just by seeing what's out there that's really close to your heart and you're doing it for uh, all the right reasons that you want to make a difference. So it'd be really good to get to know a little bit about you. Now, thanks, mate. Appreciate the, uh, the, nice, the nice words. Very, very well said. Um, where, where, do I, where do I begin? Where do I begin? I, I guess I've been a self-employed person pretty much my entire life, really, in my entire adult life. Um, I've, uh, my, my background is originally in sport and then from sport, um, I fell into being a self-employed person. Uh, my major background or what I'm known for is in hospitality and from being in hospitality and setting up infrastructure around my business, I then moved into other industries. So the, the, the most, what I'm probably most renowned for was my nightclub that I had for 10 years called Eve, Eve Bar. So I had that for a long time and, and um, I was 25, 26 when I, uh, when I started it and um, was in debt to my absolute eyeballs when we first opened the doors. It was uh, an extraordinary uh, time in my life and pressure. We started well and then went through some real rocky, rocky times and we got through it and um, yeah, kept it for 10 years. And I was, I was just saying to somebody I bumped into before, I said, 10 years in nightclub years, it's like dog years, you know? So it's, uh, it's uh, each year, I think you get about eight years. So uh, yeah, I, I, I felt like, uh, I felt about a hundred by the time uh, we finished. Uh, we sold the business. Whilst I had that business, I set up some other um, other other Entries. entities and I set up a, an events company called Together Events with some other partners and I set up a, uh, an educational business, set up a recruitment company and that's where it, where it sort of went from there. We sold our education business a, a couple of years ago. Uh, we've still got our events business which has been going strong or it had been going strong until uh, COVID, we're, uh, we're, we're in lockdown, so there's not a lot of revenue coming through the doors with the events business, unfortunately. Uh, our labour hire recruitment business is fortunately going well, and that's got a, a cleaning division that uh, we ended up setting up a specialised COVID cleaning and prevention um, part of the business uh, earlier this year. And um, yeah, that's sort of my business business background a short over the last sort of 10 15 years business background anyway um and a couple of years ago i bought a new bar um on acdc lane in the city which uh, we've named bambi bar bambi yeah we're going through a, a renovation and we were supposed to open earlier this year in april yeah um covid hit that's the best way to put it yeah. it hit us all so we didn't finish our renovations. We were supposed to put in all the final orders for our joinery work and, and everything else in about Feb. And we, we sort of felt a little uneasy. Yep. So we said, you know, let's just slow things down and wait and see what's sort of happening over the coming weeks. And um, yeah, we, we pulled everybody off site. And thankfully we did because it's an expensive process to go through a, a building and, and bar fit out and everything. Um, we pulled everyone off site and it's just sitting there gathering dust at the moment as a shell and we're waiting to find out what the next move is with our government when we can open okay well, when we have an opening yep. you know, or a, map, a road map as we keep talking about then we will decide on when to finish the renovation because we have to juggle the issues of holding costs and everything else you set out with a, a certain budget for your for your fit out and everything allow for contingencies but COVID something that you would just never have seen coming so you've got your holding costs you've got your rent you've got um you know your insurances everything else that comes with it so you have to be very very uh 
very cautious to preserve your capital um, because if we receive information that we're going to be opening in two years' time, well, it's like, well, do you know what? We need that capital to allow us to survive. So going back um, about five weeks ago, I was approached um, by some people who were working at the council, the uh, City of Melbourne Council, who were on there. Um, and they approached me and they said, look, we think you'd be a good candidate to run for uh, Lord Mayor. And they said, their current leader is really out of touch with small business and community at the moment. And they said, we feel as though from the, the feedback they keep getting from people around town and, and uh, communities, that they, people want a leader who is more in tune with community, with grassroots people and not just with the upper end boardrooms yeah. and someone who's um, yeah, got a good understanding of business and small business. And because I have a, a, a venue in the city as well, they said they thought I'd be a perfect candidate. Yeah. What did you think when they asked you that? What was the first thought that came to your head? First of all, the first thing that came to my head was, um, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Um, um, it, was, it was kind of an honour, to be honest with you. I was like, do you know what? I'm, this, is, this, is, this is kind of an honour. I, 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 I thought, you know, going back a number of years ago, that one day I may potentially get involved with politics on some level. But I always said that I would only ever get involved in politics, whether it be council, state, federal, whatever it might be, only if I thought I was needed. There's no point in me going and getting my head stuck in something if, if I'm unneeded or I don't feel as though I could improve things. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was, I was honoured when they, when they approached me and I, I said, let me have a think about things. And I thought it over and, and spoke to my wife and my brother, uh, who's my business partner with my different yeah. interests and spoke to my family and, my other business partners in other uh, business I'm involved with. And they all supported the idea of me running for it. And um, whilst I was still thinking things through, the, the story had leaked to the media yeah. and they ran a story in the, in the um, Herald Sun. Yeah. And from running that story in the Herald Sun, I thought, you know what, I might as well put it up on my social media and, and get some feedback from people on what they think and see where, where community feels. When I put it up there, it was an extraordinary, overwhelming number of messages and text messages and um, Facebook messages and Instagram messages and LinkedIn messages and emails and everything that people of support. And I actually received a number of calls, people almost pleading and crying on the phone within the small business world who have had their livelihoods completely just stolen from them. They were pleading for me to run for this position. They, the, the continual theme that was coming out of their mouths was leadership is detached from small business. They're detached from community. We need a voice for small business. And we really hope that you run for this, Nick, because we're all going to get behind you. So I felt compelled to do something. It's been great. There's been a lot of people make noise on social media about current leadership and everything else. But I'm, I'm a big believer if you want to really make a difference or make change, you need to get yourself a seat at the table. And with all the support that I've got behind me, they want me to have a crack. I'm not happy where things are going at the moment. I thought, you know what? I'm going to give this a crack and, um, and see, see, uh, see where this takes us. So um, here we are today, mate. I know I haven't stopped talking. I haven't drawn for breath. Sorry, buddy. But, but... I love it. You know, and I love your honesty, Nick. You know, you're being very transparent and honest, and I love that. And, you know, you have that experience, real life experience, because you've gone out there and, you know, you've started your own businesses. It's interesting. You said, you know, at some stage through your, the nightclub venture, there was pressure and you didn't give up. You continued to push through. And, you know, that, that, that's very important in this day and age because it's not going to be easy. It's a massive task. You have to. You've got to keep yeah. you know. You've just got to keep <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's good to hear. So tell me, what's your vision, mate? Because... You know, I live in Melbourne City, so, you know, I'm part of the whole city venture and, you know, I've been here for a couple of years now in the city, moved from the suburb to the city and I love it. And it's just such a vibrant atmosphere, you know, and we're all known for our coffee culture, 
a restaurant culture. I miss going out to dinners. Um, what's your vision? Because the city of Melbourne is probably going to be the hardest. Yeah. You know, outside, it's a little bit different. Here, you know, it's going to be hard work. So what is your vision? Number one, I know you come from the hospitality background. So you have a wealth of experience. You know how the business works. So I'm like, I'm very confident person that you're going to do it amazing job right they couldn't have picked a better person to do that than you yeah, um, what about other other verticals you know other businesses what are, what's your vision for people outside of hospital hospitality as well so absolutely mate absolutely first of all what you said then about you live in the city it, the people why we all like living in the city is you like being around the, the vibrancy it's been great to see melbourne grow up in the last the last five years, 10 years, Melbourne's really grown up. It's finally become a real major city in the world. You can, you can go out at 9.30, 10, 10.30 at night, walk into Lucy Lou and have some dumplings and a couple of cocktails or a beer or something. There's, there's always a vibe. So it's, it's shattering to see that, that all that's uh, being removed. Um, look, in, in regards to what can I do for other businesses, as I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm best known for my background in hospitality, but... I've been involved in so many industries. So I, 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 my broad understanding of many industries is going to be very important to getting our city out of its current mess. Along with that, I have like an amazing team around me. When I was first approached, I had my council team already selected for me who they were going to be. I wouldn't have proceeded unless I knew they were good people who had the, their, the right intentions, who had the same beliefs as me, and also had the experience in that council field, you know? Yeah. And one of them in particular, a guy named Philip Lelou, he's on the City of Melbourne Council right now. So he's, he's a great, I call it partner, to have as our team. Another gentleman uh, who's my deputy, is a, um, a gentleman by the name of Michael Birch. He's an older gentleman who's received an OAM for his uh, outstanding work in psychology and trauma. Yeah. So he's yeah. going to be so, he's so, so important with all the that. mental health yeah. issues because one of my major policies is around mental health, you know. So, so I'll be working side by side with him to really, um, you know, get, get people back on track. Um, and then aside from that, I've, I set up another team that is an innovations and community team yep. who are key leaders from within their own industries who I can tap into at any given time to workshop ideas to get the best outcome. For example, I've got someone like a um, Majak Dor who's a, a great role model in the Sudanese community yeah, yeah. around that North Melbourne pocket. Yeah. He's, you know, he's got some great cut through there. I already spoke about uh, Michael Birch, my yeah. deputy with mental health. Uh, then I have like a, a Joey Scandizo who is the, you know, he's the, the king of, of hairdressing in the hair and beauty world. Yeah. Self-made guy, but a, a champion person as well. Uh, then I've got Michael Ramsey, who's, in charge of the health and fitness industry. So I have my different key people. Yeah. Um, I won't go through every single person, yeah. but I have my different key people in key areas to tap into. I've already got a, a broad knowledge from being involved with industries for all these years. However, I've also got experts in each, each area to, um, yeah, to help out. So tell me, I heard about, uh, I read an article that uh, mentioned you're gonna donate some of your salary towards mental health. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me about that because I'm a massive believer of mental health. Um, yeah. Especially, um, you know, when I go for a walk in the city, it's just doom and gloom. Like it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. I can't believe what I see every day. Yeah. Um, I know, I know it's affecting a lot of people. I know it's affecting kids, even young kids. I can see it in the face. Um, I can see people going for walks and the demeanor, even when they're going for walks. So I can see a lot of people suffering from it. So you, I, I read something about you wanting to donate some of your salary towards that. I want to understand a little bit more where that's come from, why, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great gesture. So I just want to get a bit of a background on it from Thanks, you. Mate. Look, you keep hearing, you know, the leadership, Dan Andrews, hey, guys, we're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. The bloke's just giving himself a pay rise. Yeah. Right? 
everyone else, they're over here, not everyone else, but a large number of us yeah. had our livelihoods taken away from us. Yeah. Now these people are also eating into their life savings. Some of them have lost everything. They've lost their life savings. They've lost their livelihoods. These people are of all ages. I, I feel for people in that middle age of their life, that 40 to 55 year old pocket who have lost everything at this stage of their life. I feel for everybody, when you're younger, you've got time to build that up again. But you're at that point of your life, you've worked your entire life, paid your taxes, done everything you can, and then all of a sudden it's all ripped away from you. So we've got a leader there telling us, hey, we're all in this together. Well, are we in this together? You know. So I, I, I thought to myself, well, the least that I can do is actually try and prove to these people that, hey, do you know what, I'm in here for the right intentions. I'm not here to be made for a financial benefit or anything at all. I'm here for the people. So I thought, you know what, the least thing I can do is donate half of my salary back from my first year to, to show to people where, where my mindset's at and I'm donating it towards mental health. So, and as I said before, with, with my, you know, one of my key policies around mental health, um, I, I just think it's going to be such an important factor over the, the next five years plus. This isn't, a, this isn't a quick fix. This is not a quick fix. Yep. Um, it, we, it's, we're just, it's, it's the tip of the iceberg right now. It really is um, because a lot of businesses and, uh, are on life support from the government handouts. That's right. So once all that stops and we're going to start seeing more business close and then um, people being sued and, and, and uh, properties uh, taken off people and people don't have a roof over their head, this is going to be an absolute disaster. So that's why I'm, I'm really passionate about mental health and, and trying to get our city back and moving. Bring back I love city. that. You're putting the foundations in place from now because you're 100% right. I reckon um, when those supports come to an end, it's really going to affect people. And if we don't have the right foundations from now, when the time comes, then we get caught out and what do we do then? So it's, yeah. I love that you're thinking about that. So tell me, um, are you excited? <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> are you going to win this thing or what? <laughs> Look, do you know what? It's hard to say if we're going to win. Yeah. Realistically, it's the most difficult seat to win, in particular the city of Melbourne, because it's such a unique um, seat. It's usually a rather green left kind of a seat, whereas my mindset is more business orientated, which is kind of different to the usual. Um, it's real. You come from a real background. You know it. what it feels like, you know? <laughs> and that's, that's what it. I love about you. No, I appreciate it. Feels like. You've been through it, so you are, you are doing it for the right reasons. I appreciate it. I believe you're going to win. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We'll see how we go. Look, I've had some, I've had some great support, but there's, there's a lot of things pending. There's a, there's, there's a number of things that can go against you. Um, one is the different preference deals that the other parties have made with each other. Okay, so tell us about that because it's important for us to know when, when people go out there and vote, yeah. what do we need to, how do we need to do? Because I know for a fact that a lot of people don't know. They yeah. just go there and put one. If number one is they think, Nick, yeah. one, and that's yeah. it. But it doesn't work like that. So let's talk about that a bit. Yeah, so I, I've, I've put a, a photo of the voting card on my Instagram page, if anybody does want to have a look there. Yeah. And it's also on our website too. But yeah, it's important that uh, when voting, you place it in order of, of how we suggest because there's preference deals once, um, uh, say who we've, our second preference is. If that person knocked out first of all, then their votes get passed on to us. And yep. the next person, so on and so on. So it's a, I'm still actually getting my head over the whole process, probably myself, to be honest with you. But oh, it's, very, it's very important um, yeah, to get it right. Get preferences. And, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll put that as a part of the podcast so people can actually see it when they're going through it. The other element is there's some different groups or pockets of people, like a different society or, or yep. you know, cool. Carlton Inc., for example, that's a yeah. great bunch of guys there. But there's a whole heap of different little societies where other candidates have had six months to have already locked in a deal with these people who may have 
access to a thousand people or 2000 people or whatever it might be where they say, okay, well, I'm going to give you X, Y, and Z. Um, I need you guys to send out an email to everyone and say, this is what they need to do. So, so that's where I'm, you know, I'm disadvantaged, so to say, but I think I also have my own advantages as well, where I have extra social media reach and, and all the rest of it too. So, um, looking forward to seeing what, seeing what happens one way or another, either way, it's, uh, it's it's shook everybody up and it's it's uh, caused uh, a number of the other or a number of the other candidates to um, uh, to to reflect on what their overall strategy is now they're all talking about oh we're going to focus on the nighttime economy and if we get in we're going to bring in a nighttime mayor of someone who's another hospitality worker and <laughs> so it's made them all second guess uh, what they're doing which has been which has been good which is good hey tell me Nick what do you do for fun when you're not thinking politics and being a mayor and running businesses what do you do for fun what do you do for your downtime I don't I don't have downtime that's the short <laughs> answer I don't have downtime I I usually work 24 7 all year round until about april may so my my sort of down time is yeah april may yeah through to sort of july yeah, yeah may through to july which that's when everything sort of slows down a little bit which is great because that's when our event season yeah. usually finishes and that's when i usually go away with my family for a, a nice holiday or a couple of holidays during that time yeah. so yeah, so my downtime is compacted into that sort of space of time and and that's when my brain defrags and, and relaxes and comes up with ideas and enjoys itself and, and loves life. And outside of that time, I'm I'm really on on the go twenty four seven and you love what you do. I love I love working. I've got a I've got a busy brain. I've I've, I've got a busy brain. I've always have been rather active and um, um but yeah that's what we need that's what we need we need we need someone fresh with someone that's constantly ticking away coming up with ideas wanting to make a difference because i'll get back to it again because they know what it feels like you know what you went through with you mentioned your bar in acdc you know what a shock to the system you know so and a lot of other people are going through that and you know unless you've been through it, you really don't know what it feels like so for you to have gone mate, spot through on. You're spot on, mate. You're spot on. You, how can you sit there and say, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they're not no, no. empathising, you know. I really, I'm not saying that at all. But they don't understand. Yeah. You can't understand it unless... You've been through it. You're in it. Yeah. Or I'm, you've been through it. Uh, and that's reality. And that's yeah, reality. I love that. And, you know, you're doing something about it, which is great. Hey, um, I'm a big advocate of a young kid, you know. I'm massive, you know. I, I do my social media. I'm 42, so I got into social media probably in the last 18 months, you know. Um, and the reason why, I, yeah, so I got into it because, you know, I wanted to give back. You know, I don't promote products. I don't, it, it, not that there's anything, that's, that's, that's not what I do for me. It's about, um, I want to give back as much as I can. And if I can make a difference in one person's life, then I've done my job because I know what it feels like to right. go through hard times and work hard and build a business and be successful within your own right and all that. So young kids, there's going to be a lot of young kids, boys and girls watching this. And, you know, you are going to be someone that they're going to look up to, right? Um, for me, when I look up to you, the first thing that I love is that you're real modest, you're honest person from this conversation. And I, and I, that, I, and I love that. But what is your advice for the young kids out there that are watching this show that, you know, that have seen your journey? right? You, you worked hard, you built businesses, you've done that, and you're here today. What is your advice to them? You know, if you were to give them advice about life, business, you know, never giving up, going for their goals, because they're going to look up to you, you know, what is your advice? I appreciate the nice words again, mate. Um, what is my advice? I, I think the real thing is in life, you've got to give it a crack. You know, you've just got to Give it a crack. You, you, you don't know. This is so cliche and maybe boring, but you don't know unless you have a go. You know, my old man's always said to me, mate, just give it a crack. Yeah. Just give it a crack because no one's ever going to go and throw a bag of gold over your fence. Yeah. So you've got to go out and, and get it yourself and try a number of different things. Try a number of different things. Yeah. Some things will work. Some things won't work. Some things will work, but you don't enjoy it. Well, if that's the case, you know, you, you've got to try and find something that 
in my opinion, and this isn't yeah. always right, in my opinion, yeah. you've got to find something that you enjoy and also pays the bills. Yeah. Because, you know, you can have enjoyment, but if you, if you can't pay the bills, then uh, I don't need to go on about what, what that does. But, you, you know, you need, to, you need to be able to support yourself, support your family or support, just have to be able to support yourself. So go out, give things a crack, try a number of different things, if you're lucky, you'll fall into something very, very early. Sometimes it takes people longer to fall into things than others. But if you try a number of different things, you will get to um, have a different perspective on life and um, give you a better opportunity at, at choosing the right direction. I 100% agree with you. Persistence is the key. Yeah. You know, persistence is the key. I always say it's not the smart ones that win, it's the persistent ones. As long as you don't give up, you continue to push. And, you know, we live in the best country in the world. If it doesn't yeah, work yeah. out, hey, it's not the end of the world. Get up and go on the next day. Mate, I love our chat. You know, you, it's, it's lovely to meet you. We haven't met before. First time. I haven't met you. Yeah. Know, I always heard of you and, and everything and mutual friends. Uh, uh, and, and, so, and yes, yeah, so it was good, good to speak properly. Same, mate. So thank you very much, num for, number one, for making the time in such a short notice. And I love that because it shows that you're, you know, you're ready to give it a go. You know, you're selfless. You want to, you know, do your best. So I really appreciate you making the time in such a short time. And um, when do the roads close? Friday? Yeah, this Friday. This Friday, mate. At all uh, the the yeah, Friday the twenty third. All of the uh, papers need to be back in the uh, mailbox by then. So uh, so what's vote, what's vote right, like? Where can people find you, mate? Where can people find if they want more information? The Instagram. Okay. The Go to, go to my website, bringbackmelbourne.com.au or you can find my Instagram page, which is uh, nick underscore Russian. <laughs> um, but, um, mate, look, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, you've got a great show here. So, um, no, I really appreciate your time and, uh, and you. having me. And best of luck. And I can't wait to talk to you once you become the mayor, mate, because I have no doubt you're going to win. I'm very yeah. confident. So I can't wait to have you back on the show once you're the mayor of Melbourne. You're doing great things for us. Thank you. Thank you, mate. You're a champion. Thanks for having me again. Thank you. Bye-bye.